Here. Here. Trustee Schwarzy. Here. 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 Please rise. Raise the Face the flag. I pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a motion to approve the uh, minutes of the March 2nd, 2020 special workshop meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Schwarzy, seconded by Trustee Frusiloni. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Aye. Trustee Aye. Trustee Frusiloni? Aye. Trustee Schwarzy? Aye. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 2nd, 2020 Village Board meeting? So moved. So, second. Moved by Trustee Geezer, seconded by Trustee Zalik. Clerk, please call the roll. Aye. 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 Do I have a motion to approve but not release the executive session minutes of the March 2nd, 2020 Village Board meeting? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Frusiloni, seconded by Trustee Schwarzy. Clerk, please call the roll. Aye. 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 Trustee Schwarzy. Aye. I do not believe we have anything from addresses from the audience. So we actually moved to a, a public hearing that was continued from the March 2nd, 2020 Village Board meeting for the annexation agreement of uh, V Holdings Inc., uh, the property at 2201 North Main Street, Wheaton. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Um, moved by Trustee Frusiloni, seconded by Trustee uh, Geezer. <laughs> Clerk, please call the roll. Aye. 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 Mr. Turin, you have any comment on the? So, um, I don't know if you, did you the last meeting? Did you notice? No, no. We showed it. We held it up. Yeah. So, there, there was a notice that was. Can you turn your mic on? Thanks. Thank you. There we go. So you had in your packet the public notice that was uh, published in the Daily Herald indicating that on March 2nd, the, uh, the public hearing on the annexation agreement would be held. And everyone recalls that on March 2nd, uh, it was continued to today's date. You have in your packet a copy of the annexation agreement as well as the proposed subdivision and development agreement uh, for this property. Uh, the annexation agreement anticipates that the property will be disconnected from the village, uh, from the city of Wheaton, and then annexed into the village of Carroll Stream. Uh, that was pursuant to an intergovernmental agreement that the village passed uh, back last year, I believe it was in September. Uh, and then the redevelopment agreement provides for that annexation parcel together with two other parcels uh, to be subdivided and then developed uh, in accordance with the plans that are uh, attached to the uh, to the documents. There was a public hearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission. The uh, Planning and Zoning Commission recommended that development and all of the ordinances that you have uh, that are uh, attached to the uh, development and uh, subdivision agreement. Uh, you should be aware then that by passing the annexation agreement, the village is agreeing to go ahead and annex the property once it's disconnected from the city of Wheaton, and then also to come back and pass the ordinances uh, for the development uh, to allow the development to occur in accordance with those ordinances and the plans and specifications that are attached. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Are there any comments uh, from the audience in pertaining to this public hearing? No. Uh, does the board have any questions or comments? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to close. Said so moved. Okay. Second. Moved by Trustee Schwarzy, seconded by Trustee Frusiloni. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Zalek. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Frusiloni. Aye. Trustee Schwarzy. Aye. Okay. The public hearing is closed, and we can. Uh, is there a motion to establish a consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Schwarzy, seconded by Trustee Frusiloni. 
Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Zalik? Aye. Trustee Yeezer? Aye. Trustee Frizzoloni? Aye. Trustee Schwarzy? Aye. Thank you. And can you read what can be on the consent agenda? <clears throat> Staff recommends approval of amendment number four to the agreement for operations, maintenance, and management services of the WRC in the amount of $1,925,758 for the period of May 1, 2020 through April 30th, 2021. Yes. 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 Staff recommends approval of an employee leasing agreement with GovTemps USA for contract part time secretarial services in the Public Works Department for the period of May 30th, 2020 through April 30th, 2021. Yes. 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 Off. Uh, yeah, that'll be off. Okay. Staff recommends the 2020 Flexible Pavement Project be awarded to Schroeder Asphalt Services, Inc. of Huntley, Illinois, at the bid unit prices proposed. Yes. 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 Staff recommends approving a contract for truck rehabilitation services to Henderson Products under Sourcewell contract number 080818-HPI in the amount of $153,956 pursuant to the provisions of section 5-8-3B and subsection 5-8-14L of the Carroll Stream Code of Ordinances. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Just a quick question on that, Phil. We're, we're okay on any issues we're having. Is this the same company that we had some issues on one of the other trucks? No, uh, we'll be moving to a different company. Okay, <clears throat> yes. Staff recommends approval of the purchase of AMRs to Midwest Meter Inc. in the amount of $349,193. Yes. 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 Staff recommends approval to purchase 42 high-velocity ballistic vests through JG Uniforms in the amount of $12,640. Yes. 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 Ordinance approving an annexation agreement for the V Holdings, Inc. property at 2201 North Main Street, Wheaton, Illinois, which is proposed to be redeveloped in conjunction with other adjacent incorporated parcels with a 3,500 square foot automobile service station and convenience store. Yes. 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 Ordinance number 2020-03-07. Resolution for truck 12 <clears throat> 2005 Ford F-350 SD to be declared surplus and authorize its disposal via public auction. Yes. 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 Resolution number 3130. Resolution to designate laptop hard drives be declared surplus and authorize a transfer of ownership to the Carroll Stream Public Library. Yes. 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 Resolution 3131. New business, recommendation to reappoint Anthony Simonetta to the Police Pension Fund Board for a term expiring April 30th, 2022. Yes. 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 Regular bills, March 3rd, 2020 through March 16th, 2020. Yes. 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 Addendum warrants, March 3rd, 2020 through March 16, 2020. Yes. 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 Treasurer's report, revenue expenditure statements, and balance sheet for the month ended February 29, 2020. Received. 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 <clears throat> Is there a motion to put those items on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Geezer, seconded by Trustee Frusiloni. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Zalik? Aye. Trustee Geezer? Aye. Trustee Frusiloni? Aye. Trustee Schwarzy? Aye. Is there a motion to approve these items by omnibus vote? So moved. Moved by Trustee Zalik, seconded by Trustee Schwarzy. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Frizzoloni. Aye. Trustee Schwarzy. Aye. And off to report of officers. Uh, oh, you pulled off. off. Um, that was actually pulled off because uh, we're, we're not going to make any. Uh, we're not going to make the, um, the hire at this point in time. Uh, we're able to hold off on the hiring uh, due to the uh, uh, stoppage of the AMR program, uh, that person will be able to do that work. So we, we don't need to hire that person at this point in time. We'll have to come back to the board when we're ready to do that. Okay. 
So we don't need to do anything with that besides pull it off, correct? Thank you very much. Trustee Geezer. Thank you very much. Um, we live in interesting times. Um, uh, I, I work in the hospitality business. I work, uh, so it's interesting how, uh, what, what's happening, and um, I don't disagree with it, frankly. Uh, but Tia, uh, could you tell us, you posted something on social media, how this will affect uh, Carroll Stream restaurants and bars? Indeed. Uh, so today we shared on the Village website in a news article and also on our social media accounts the information that Governor Pritzker has ordered a halt to all dine-in food service in restaurants starting today at 9 p.m. and that will continue through March 30th. Our businesses can still be supported by our residents through carry-out orders, uh, drive-through, delivery service, and curbside pickup. You can also purchase gift cards to our businesses to help support them and their employees through a difficult time. Okay, thank you very much. And all I have to say, uh, finally, is to say stay, stay safe and uh, we'll get through this. We'll get through this together. So that's my report. Thank you, Trustee Easier. Trustee Shorzy. Thank you, sir. Um, along with the topic of discussion right now, I do wanna say that uh, Governor Pritzker's office Put out the following information for, uh, it's called the Economic Assistance for Illinois Families. Um, so a person can apply for unemployment insurance. A, if you don't have paid sick leave and you're sick from the virus, or you are unable to work because of the, of the COVID-19 virus. And there's an 800 number to call, 1-800-244-5631. So just want to make that available to people. Um, on May, on March 4th, uh, we had our first senior team meeting and I just want to spend a, a minute or two talking about that. It was a really, a, a successful first meeting. Um, the goals of these, of this meeting is to bring together service providers and stakeholders to review current services provided to our senior population here in Carroll Stream to identify service needs and to identify solutions, um, for those needs by improving our collaboration or implementing new services um, with all of our stakeholders. And we had 25 uh, attendees from 19 social service agencies attend, including uh, the village. We had our uh, community development director, Don Bastion was there, Bob uh, Meller and Joe Carey, our village manager, assistant village manager were in attendance, along with uh, Sue Dominguez from finance. Yeah. Um, and then we had a representative from the library, uh, the ad adult uh, humanitarian service project, the Milton Township SALT, which is seniors and law enforcement together, Prairie State Legal Services, Wayne Township, Senior Home Sharing, Colony Park, Park District, Belmont Village, Windsor Park, Outreach Community Center, DuPage Senior Services, Bloomingdale Township Senior Services, Family Health Mart, uh, the, I represented the fire district and as a village trustee, uh, police department was also there and social services obviously uh, along with we had two actual senior residents come to uh, to participate as well and uh, it was it was really exciting to hear everything that uh, that's out there and all of us coming together and, 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 and talking about what we can do to help our seniors so as of now we have another meeting scheduled for April 15th here in this building uh, we'll see if that happens or not based on this current conditions, but you're all welcome to attend. Um, it, was, uh, it was a really, really good meeting and I'm looking forward at least some point continuing this. So the last thing, and I don't want to steal anyone's thunder, certainly uh, Trustee Zalik, former police officer's thunder, but we purchased, uh, approved the purchase of some high risk ballistic vests today and a uh, little bit different than the current vest that we have. And I don't know if the police chief has a moment to to talk about those ballistic vests. <laughs> Sorry, John, if I was stealing your thunder. There you go. Yes, these are uh, special ballistic vests. Uh, the vests that the officers wear on a daily basis that are assigned to them, um, they can stop just about any uh, round from a handgun. These are specially designed vests that will be uh, put into police vehicles. And then when, uh, if 
God forbid we ever get a call of an active shooter with a high-powered high rifle, they can slip these on, and this will stop the actual rounds out of an assault weapon. So it's designed to go over their vest, and it's designed to protect the vital organs of the officer, both in the uh, front and in the back. And they're quite heavy, so it's not something you want to wear every day. But they will be in the vehicles available to all the officers. We'll put them in every vehicle. That's great. Thank you, Chief. And they were purchased with help of our federal Department of Justice seizure account, correct? Yes. So very good. Um, other than that, please shop in Carroll Stream. And uh, that ends my report. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Shorzy. Trustee Zalek. You know, I just uh, want to wish the best of health to all the residents um, and employees and staff and their families during this time of uh, the virus. That's, that's all I got. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Frizzoloni. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I think we are living in a very interesting world. A week ago, I think all of our priorities were different than what they are today. Um, I want to thank staff. The amount of information that we have on our website is its astonishing. Um, it's very well compiled. Um, it has been shared and reshared and reshared on many of the community Facebook pages. Um, and the comments have been very positive and very thankful from the residents from the amount of information that we're putting out there um, and how timely you're updating the information as well um, because it seems like every day something is, is changing and there's, there's new things that we're trying to figure out. Um, the one thing that, that, that I just I wanted to ask because it was asked of me by, actually by a family member um, and even though I know the answer to it, I'm still going to ask Mr. Um, Modaf to address, is right now there's this conception out there that you have to have so many cases of water, and, and I haven't been able to figure out why, why water is being hoarded when there's no threat to our water supply. It's been proven that this virus is, will not impact our water supply, but... The question was asked, if this is a long duration type thing, is there any threat to our, to our water supply and is there anything that could potentially shut down the water that we get from Lake Michigan? Um, I, I've seen no credible threat at this time. I, I don't foresee any. Um, I think if there's no one, no one to staff the water production facilities in Chicago, um, or in um, Elmhurst at the DuPage Water Commission, and for some reason our Lake Michigan supply of water um, is interrupted. Um, we still have some active wells that we've maintained since 1992 when we first took Lake Michigan water. I should say, despite um, many challenges since 1992, we've never had to put well water back into our system. <coughs> That being said, we pump those wells once a month. We take samples from those wells once a month, and we have those sample results sent into the IEPA. Um, we have, as recently as less than 12 months ago, um, replaced some equipment to allow us to introduce chlorine into any well water that we pump. We've drilled our staff on how to quickly do that. We have delivery arrangements with uh, vendors to bring chlorine to us. Uh, within a certain amount of time. Um, we also have 6 million gallons of above ground storage. Um, so any lag time between delivery of lake water and us being able to operate our wells should be covered uh, by storage. But again, at this point, I really don't see the need for um, stocking water. Um, I've read American Water Works Association website as late as today, uh, CDC website as late as today that there's no known um, viability of coronavirus in finished water. Um, DuPage Water Commission, um, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to read this, um, uh, is keeping us updated um, on a daily basis. Um, so at this point I really don't understand the, the desire to hoard water. Um, I won't tell anybody what to do, but there are no credible threats uh, that we're aware of. Thank you. And while we love that residents are shopping Carroll Stream, 
um, we would ask just common sense when you're shopping. Um, we've seen grocery stores after grocery stores being cleaned out and then they get restocked and then they get cleaned out again and then they get restocked. So what I'm hoping is that um, the message is gonna get through that we are not in any jeopardy right now of, of food shortages or water shortages or any kind of vital supplies that people need to survive and we just ask that people use common sense when you go to the store buy what you need and leave some for potentially your neighbors who may not have the opportunity or the funds to be able to buy three weeks worth of groceries at a time. So um, we don't know what's gonna happen, but we do have resources available within the village should our residents need it. And with that, I will end my report. Thank you, Trustee. <coughs> Thank you, Trustee for Saloni. Our assistant uh, to the village manager and tonight's clerk, Tia, do you have a report? Well, since Laura isn't here tonight, I would ask that we keep the military and our first responders and their families and our thoughts. In addition, as we're thinking of different ways that we can help our neighbors and our community in this challenging time, I'd like you to consider taking five minutes and visiting my2020census.gov and completing your census. The census is only nine questions per person in your household, and it can help our community uh, achieve resources of approximately $1,500 per person. This money can be used to help support clinics, roads, school programs, as well as helping support police and fire. It supports political power locally to the federal level and can help us with grants and bring business opportunities to our community. So if you can please take five minutes and go to my2020census.gov today and complete your online census for, we can work together and help provide for the future of our community. Thank you very much. Our village attorney. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, today, pursuant to the gubernatorial disaster proclamation, uh, Governor Pritzker issued an additional executive order. Uh, it's executive order 2020-07 and uh, deals with uh, obviously COVID-19. Uh, the the, proclam the um, executive order has a number of different sections. The first, uh, deals with the issue of restaurants and closing restaurants for in, uh, in prem on premises consumption. Uh, but it's important to note it does allow in house delivery, third party delivery, drive through, and curbside pickup from any restaurant. Uh, so the restaurants can remain open for those particular purposes. Uh, Section 2 also provides uh, that uh, starting uh, tomorrow, uh, all public and private gatherings in the state of Illinois uh, of 50 or more people are prohibited uh, for the duration of the gubernatorial uh, proclamation. Uh, so uh, that needs to be kept in mind. Uh, Section 3 deals with enforcement of the governor's uh, executive orders and provides that the state police, Illinois Department of Health, state fire marshal, local liquor commission, uh, can I use available resources to enforce the provisions of uh, the executive order? Uh, that's important because uh, as, of, as of late this afternoon, uh, there were some uh, information that restaurants uh, may decide to violate the governor's order and, uh, and decide that they're going to continue to have some type of festivities tomorrow uh, for the celebration of St. Patrick's Day. And the governor has made it very clear that if that, is, that occurs, uh, those uh, particular restaurants, if they have liquor licenses, their licenses will be revoked immediately. Uh, so I think it's important to have that, uh, that known. Uh, of particular importance to this body and other municipal bodies is Section 6, which suspends certain provisions of the Open Meetings Act and would allow municipal bodies to have public meetings uh, by means of electronic communication. Uh, so there would not be the necessity to actually have a meeting at a public place where the, where the public uh, uh, is required to, uh, to, to come. There can be electronic form of, uh, of uh, public meetings. Uh, there are provisions that deal with the fact that the public um, should have access and the ability to, uh, to listen in and, to, and still, public would still have the opportunity to provide public comment 
um, and we're looking at the issues in terms of how that public comment would, would occur, whether it would be through email comments, written comments that they could provide, et cetera. Uh, but it's important to note that um, if, in fact, uh, any of these items change, uh, if the governor decides that, uh, uh, that meetings, even uh, 50 um, or less, should be curtailed, uh, that there is now the ability to have those meetings uh, telephonically. Uh, I think you all um, may have heard uh, that the president uh, indicated that the guidelines now would be uh, for gatherings of 10 or more to be prohibited. Um, so um, that right now is just a guideline. The president has not issued any type of formal, uh, <coughs> formal executive order with respect to that. But as the information comes, um, uh, we will keep you informed. I did provide a copy of the executive order to Bob this afternoon, so he has, uh, he has that executive order. But I wanted to make sure everybody recognized that uh, that order had been issued, and the, uh, the governor is holding weekly uh, conferences uh, and call-in conferences that are available for public officials to, uh, uh, to listen in. And um, the number has been provided by the Illinois Municipal League for anybody who wants to jump on those calls. Uh, so that's all I have for my report. Thank you very much. Our village manager, Bob. Um, we received correspondence today from um, our uh, government affairs manager from Comcast um, regarding uh, the coronavirus. Uh, basically, they were trying to address uh, all the students that are off of school uh, due to the school closures. Um, and they're making their Xfinity Wi-Fi free for 60 days uh, to... Uh, Illinois residents, um, you can go to www.xfinity.com forward slash Wi-Fi to find out where those hotspots are. So that'll allow um, students and residents to access the internet for free. You don't have to be a current customer. Um, we also uh, conducted our third budget workshop this evening. Um, we discussed the water and sewer fund, the capital improvement program, uh, the state and federal asset seizure fund, and the equipment replacement fund, um, which pretty much uh, covers all the, uh, the general corporate fund, which we did previous to that. So we pretty much wrapped up all the budget meetings. Um, we will distribute the, uh, the budget uh, by March 27th and we will uh, present the uh, uh, budget to the village board at the April 6th board meeting for approval. Um, and then, let's see what else. Uh, don't forget to vote tomorrow. Um, this, uh, the municipal center is a voting location. Normally, people would vote at the library in this uh, uh, district, uh, but since the library is under renovation, we've been getting some calls on uh, where people can vote, so it'll be in this room. Um, so we're just asking people to, uh, uh, you know, be mindful of others and uh, do your your voting duties, and uh, we'll try to keep things clean for everybody. So, um, and then finally, um, uh, regarding COVID nineteen or the coronavirus, uh, uh, Joe Carey, the assistant village manager, is our point person. He's kind of coordinating all of our responses and activities and how we're handling it as a staff and uh, messages the community in, uh, in conjunction with Tia uh, from the manager's office. And I don't know if you have anything else to add to that, Joe. Uh, we've already covered a lot. I, I think the hard part is the information is changing uh, several times a day. I mean, from the original uh, number of 250 uh, uh, assemblage, you know, the restriction to 50, and now it appears to be even smaller than that. So, yeah, I would just add you, know, we are definitely monitoring this. Um, I mean, throughout the weekend, I think I was glued to my phone on, you know, the various updates and making sure those were communicated to Tia and to Bob. And I know um, other department heads as well, uh, John Baytech, um, you know, sent information, uh, just trying to keep up to date on this. Um, we are monitoring this closely making sure the information is posted on our social media outlets, our website, 
uh, and our other communication channels just to make sure we can educate individuals as much as possible. Um, we strongly encourage residents to you know, you know, visit the CDC's website. That's where the most accurate and up-to-date information will be. I'd also encourage individuals to review the DuPage County Health website. Both of those um, we have linked um, to our website um, so that residents can easily get to those sites. But that's going to be where the most fact-based information is. And, um, and so we would encourage individuals to stay informed, stay educated, um, and that that's really is the most important component of that. Um, we do have a primary here tomorrow, as evidenced by the voting booths that are, that are in here. Um, we do have scheduled a, a deep clean of our public areas by our cleaning company uh, tomorrow night so that uh, for office hours and for members of the public who might be visiting uh, on Wednesday, uh, that we'll make sure that this uh, facility is as clean as possible. And we're also taking a look um, on an ongoing basis how our operational um, needs will may be impacted by the corona, uh, COVID-19 and we'll take um, the necessary precautions as necessary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, to, to piggyback on, on our uh, village manager's comment about voting uh, here and not at the library, also at, uh, if your precinct is Windsor Park, Windsor. Colony Park, or Belmont, correct? You've been moved to the DuPage County Fairgrounds. Did I get that correct? I believe so, yeah. yes. Um, there will be no voting inside of those. So please uh, make sure to vote tomorrow. It's important. Uh, piggybacking on, on Trustee Frusiloni's comments about uh, being kind, we're, we're a, a village full of really good people. When you go to the store, keep that up. Um, as she said, there's, there's no shortage. We're, people are causing the shortage by, by stockpiling things that they don't need. Um, God knows why somebody would need 10 cases of toilet paper, but make sure to share with others. Um, and, and on top of that, uh, with, with this uh, restaurant and bar closing, so many of our local restaurants and bars, especially the, the locally owned ones, help a lot of people with their various causes, um, whatever it is. Well, it's kind of our turn to give them a help if possible. I know some people don't have that ability, but if, if it's possible, order that extra meal from, from whoever your favorite local restaurant is. Buy a gift card, like it was mentioned. You can always buy a gift card now. Use it later when they're opened up. Just look out for them, because um, they do a pretty darn good job of looking out for us when we ask for help. And uh, going right into that, and uh, Mary, feel free to jump in on this one. So we finished our bags tournament. And uh, first off, thanks to, to Chrissy's uh, right across the street and Flood Brothers Disposal, who each added an additional $1,000 into their donations. And then a list way too long to, to go through. But I do want to thank, thank our committee, um, which is uh, myself and my wife, um, my daughter and son-in-law, Tim and Shannon Foley, uh, Mary Frusiloni, uh, Paul and Laura Zarnicki, our clerk, Laura, uh, Jean Mandrala, uh, Sarah Marcucci, Nick Porter, the whole Sadalaski family. Um, kind of a new addition this year. Uh, somebody who works there is Mike Arnon. He was he was fantastic. Um, did I miss anybody? No, I don't think so. No. We uh, we hoped to break last year's record, which was twenty one thousand dollars and change, um, and we decided to do it a little different by by sharing it a little bit. Um, the kids' tournaments uh, go to one thing, and then we split some of the other. So what happened is um, we're going to be donating to the Special Olympics $750, the Ronald McDonald House $750, the one at, uh, in Winfield, the Outreach College Tour Program $2,100, the Dominic Savarino Charitable Organization $2,100, the Carroll Stream Parks Foundation $2,100, and the Corpus Christi Knights of Columbus, also $2,100, which uh, then leaves for American Cancer Society and the Relay for Life will be donating $17,100. Um, that's a grand total. Mary, you want to throw that number out there? Over $27,000. Um, when we were at our the, the championship night, we weren't sure if we were going to make $25,000. Um, it came down to really 
the last raffle tickets of the night and we broke 25,000 and we were ecstatic. And then Chrissy's came back to us and said, you know what, we're gonna throw a little bit more in. And then we had some online auctions that came in and some last minute people that, that came through. And when the total came through, it was astonishing. And this is an amazing, amazingly generous community. And when they heard that we wanted to give and spread to other organizations within the community, it was amazing. The kids tournament was a ton of fun. I mean, the, the kids were, um, they were awesome. Uh, we had three-year-olds playing against 16-year-olds. And beating them. And beating them <laughs> a lot, actually. Um, I think one day our champions were, what, six and seven? Yep. Yeah, so it really, age had nothing to do with it. Skill had nothing to do with it. But the kids just had an absolute blast. And when we were able to tell them that, you know, they were giving back to kids in need, that really just made them want to make their parents buy even more um, raffle tickets. And there were some really cool raffle prizes. There was. It, it's amazing how much, what was donated. And, and on top of that, everybody sitting at these tables in one way, shape, or form helped this tournament. I mean, it, this is, it, it's kind of exciting that it absolutely has become a community event and, uh, we get people asking us, oh, can we do this next year? Can we do that? So hopefully it'll continue to grow. I know that's a number, that's going to be a tough number to beat, absolutely. Uh, but I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to everybody who's involved in one way, shape, or another. Um, it just shows what a wonderful community we live in. Absolutely. And with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Frusiloni, seconded by Trustee Geezer. Clerk, call it roll. Trustee Zalek? Aye. Trustee Geezer? Aye. Trustee Frizzoloni? Aye. Trustee Shorzy? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Stop coughing on me. I'm not coughing on you.